Shalom family. I've been wanting to come on. Um, had something in my Ruach um, dealing with the bread of affliction, the bread of adversity. Um, and I've been wanting to come on. I wanted to do an actual lesson on it, but the week has not been the way I've planned. So um, I figured I'd just come on and just kind of give just from my spirit, from my Ruach, um, what it is that the Most High has been saying to me. And I've just been kind of just reflecting on and thinking about the bread of affliction, the bread of adversity. We're in the middle of um, the Feast of Unleavened Bread right now. Um, so each day we're eating of the unleavened bread. And um, so what I've been focusing on and kind of meditating on is the bread of affliction. When we eat the bread of affliction so when we eat something we're consuming it right we're taking it in when the scripture talks about eating something or drinking something it's something that you're taking in and consuming it's something that um is different from just kind of chewing on something if you chew on something you know just like with regular food if you're chewing on something you know, you can chew it. It may start getting your juices going. Your digestive enzymes and stuff will start to do something in your mouth and in your stomach and stuff. It'll start to a process. But if you don't, you can you still have an option to spit it out. You know what I mean? When you're just chewing on something, you can you can always spit it out and stop the process. But once you swallow that thing, you know now that thing has to go through the whole process of of consumption. You know, once you swallow it, you you've taken it in. And now it's, it's, it ain't no, up, you know, unless you vomit it up or up chuck it and, you know, regurgitate it. There's no stopping the process once you've digested, once you've started to swallow it and take it in. You know, so you're going to consume, you're going to eat, you're going to take in whatever comes along with that thing that you allowed in. You know, so when the scriptures are telling us to eat something or to drink something, it's it's... You have to take in everything that's going to come with that. Um, and it has to go through its process. So when we're eating of the bread of affliction, the bread of adversity, it's not typically something that we've chosen to do. Um, we're not talking about um, we're not talking about trials that you've gotten yourself into, you know, by your choices necessarily. Um, but when affliction is something that comes on you and you have to deal with it. You have to deal with everything that comes along with it. And it's something that is fed to you that you don't have really an option but to take. But the option that we have when it comes to consuming the bread of conflict, the bread of affliction is how we consume it. You know what I mean? So you have no choice but to take it in but the way that you take it in the way that you chew on it the way that you absorb it um is going to to, to determine how you come out of it so when we're dealing with affliction when we're facing adversity what we are taking into our minds what we're taking into our spirit what we are coming up with in the midst of that is going to determine who we are becoming uh the scripture in isaiah I believe chapter 30 that, that talks about eating the bread of affliction and it says you want to eat the bread of affliction yet in the midst of it your teacher will be revealed so when we're in our affliction the teacher is revealed in the midst of that affliction that we're going through but the thing about it is is are we going to allow ourselves to be taught are we going to allow the teacher to to rise up and to show us how to walk through the affliction through that adversity when um yahusha was dealing with what he was dealing with and um he talked about drinking, you know, drinking his cup, you know, and um, 
he asked the question, you know, can you can you drink this cup? I can't remember if he asked the question or if he told him that you can't drink this cup that I'm drinking of, you know, because um, we each have our own individual cups that we have to drink, you know, but it's just a matter of how, how do you drink it? You know, how do you deal with the bitterness of it? How do you deal with the, the, the dryness of it, the hardness of the bread? Uh, how do you do it? And it makes all the difference in the world because based on how you do that, it's going to determine the rest of your walk, your experience. Because you can eat of the bread of affliction and it can just make you bitter. It can make you angry. It can cause you to lose your faith and your trust as you're going through it. Um, you can eat the bread of affliction and become a person who is who has a demeanor in a a ruach a spirit of an afflicted one but when you look at Yahusha as he was dealing with his affliction he remained in the posture of a son he remained in the posture of a brother he remained in the posture of one who had submitted himself when he when he cried out to the most high um in the garden of gethsemane he in that place of pressing he cried out to the most high and he said you know not my will you know if, if you would take this cup for me <laughs> that's what that's where it was if you would you know take this cup for me let this cup pass and but not your will not my will but your will be done is what he said you know, so he's saying, you know, this is a cup I prefer to not have to drink, but if I must drink it, if I must eat this affliction, let your will be done. You know, so he humbled himself and submitted himself to not just accept the affliction, but to allow his spirit and his actions and his mindset to remain under subjection to the most high and the most high's will as he was going through that affliction because sometimes we can go through some, you don't have a choice but to go through an affliction that has been appointed to you but sometimes we go through in rebellion we go through it i'm gonna do this but i'm gonna do it my way i'm gonna go through this but everybody gonna know <laughs> that i don't like it you know i'm gonna go through this but after this is done i ain't gonna never do this again i ain't gonna never do that again you know, so we go through our affliction in a way that is not um, glorifying to the Most High Yah. So, a lot of us are experiencing different types of adversity and afflictions. And the key to it is allowing the Most High to cause our teacher to rise up in the midst of that affliction to allow it to teach us the scriptures say that the messiah yahusha he learned obedience through his suffering he learned obedience through his suffering so through the sufferings that he went through in the flesh he learned obedience to the will in the in the voice of the most high and that's what we have to do we have to allow our suffering to teach us obedience we have to uh, allow what we're going through to mold us, but not mold us to be uh, contrary to the to this to the will of the Most High, but to mold us into the image of the Most High. We have to allow ourselves, like in, in when the, all of us pressed, the oil comes out. We have to allow ourselves to be pressed and not crushed and destroyed, but pressed, and the oil comes out. Because that's who we are. We're Israel. We're, we're the olive tree. We are... Uh, the olive tree is something that can grow. The olive tree can grow. A lot of times you'll see an olive tree with the, the roots are above the, the soil. Um, when you know that most trees, the roots are under the soil. You know, it needs to be in the soil and to absorb all of the nutrients and from the water. But a lot of times the olive tree, the roots will be 
in the soil and it'll be growing in an unusual place it'll grow in a place that seems like the tree shouldn't thrive in the in that environment it seems like it's too dry and it's not enough the soils the uh, roots aren't rooted enough and and um but but the the root system of an olive tree is a lot uh more shallow it's not as deep it's, it's more shallow um to allow it to get the nutrients from the top so it's it, the olive tree is made to thrive it's made for survival mode you know it's made to endure and so that olive tree represents Yisrael, represents the the household of yah the people of yah and we are designed and made to be able to thrive and survive in harsh conditions which is what we are in the most high knew that we weren't going to stay in our land but that we were going to be scattered into various harsh conditions where we had to survive even though that the environment is not ideal the environment is not what we would prefer what you would think that a person needs to thrive and flourish you know those aren't aren't the environments we a lot of times find ourselves in but that olive tree has what it needs in it for it to survive regardless and that's what he's put in us to be able to survive and to thrive regardless of the harsh and non-ideal conditions and environments that we find ourselves in. And from that olive tree comes the olive. And then that olive comes and the fruit of that olive, the flesh of that olive is then crushed. Even though you can eat, the, you can eat of the olive itself, but the best part of the olive is, is the oil that comes out of it once it's crushed. So the tree was designed to endure so that that <laughs> that olive can go through another pressing process of it, it being crushed so that the oil can flow forth from it and that's what the most high desires out of us when we're going through these pressing situations and that we're not just crushed our flesh and just our, we aren't just crushed and, and thrown away but that we are pressed so that the oil can come out and that oil gives life that oil gives light we know that the oil goes into the, the the manure the lamp it goes into and that oil is used to create light so when we, we're pressed out the oil that comes out of us that's the spirit of the most high that is able to flourish out of that is able to to be a light is able to reflect the light of the most high to be able to uh be be uh, a source of light and strength and direction in this darkness in this world um, so we have to allow ourselves to go through this process and know that we are built for it. We're made for it. We were made to endure these conditions, but only the tree that's rooted in the most high can endure. Only the tree, only Yisrael. Yisrael is the house of Yah, the people of Yah, the people that are rooted in Yah. So life is coming from that tree is rooted is it's it's getting its source of water and sustenance from the most high so only that tree only what is a part of that tree has what it takes to endure so that's why we have to be rooted in his word and rooted full of his spirit as ruach so that we can have what we need from our source to endure all that we must endure the affliction that we must endure so we must eat of this this bread of affliction and we must allow ourselves to be taught um to be taught by it and as we're being taught the most high is able to to feed us and nourish us so we can actually get nourishment <laughs> so you know so it's because it's still bread and it's still a cup and it's just a matter of allowing ourselves to be nourished and finding the nourishment, allowing our roots to go down, to be nourished, um, despite the fact of what we are, um, despite what we are going through. But in order to do that, we have to look for it. We have to look for it. I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted. There's something interesting going on <laughs> in my environment. Very interesting. I wish I could flip my camera right now, but I'm going to continue. But we have to look for uh, what to be what the nourishment is for it that's why when Yahusha in Matthew chapter 5 when he talks when he does the um he's talking about blessed are those 
who hunger and thirst for righteousness and blessed are those. He's talking to people who are going through an oppression, but he's saying that despite these things, blessed are you when you respond, when your response rises above the reality of what's going on. You know, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who, you know, who will become peacemakers. Blessed are those who dig in and allow the fruit of the Ruach. Those who allow themselves to be humbled under Yah's mighty hand. Those who allow themselves to go through their oppression, but to pull on that fruit to thrive from. Those people will be blessed. Those people will be Will, will will eat the fruit of the reward of Yah. So I just want to encourage you to allow the Most High to feed you despite what you are going through, I tell you. Allow the Most High to feed you. Allow the Most High to nourish you. Find it. Find the nourishment. That's what our faith is. Faith is it starts off with us being nourished by the Most High, our Imunah. We're first nourished by the Most High, just like we're nourished by our mother, right? Um, and then once we be, get, we take in that nourishment, it strengthens us and we get stronger. And as we get stronger, we're able to walk. And then as we walk, we gain strength and we're able to, to we will be able to be faithful for what we were being fed for. Because when we're being fed, we're being fed to get to gain strength. So that now we can do what we are designed to do, which is to walk and to act and to run and to, to, to do works. So as the Most High nourishes us and He gives us those things, that, that part of the Imunah, that part of the faith is Him, is learning to trust Him and know that He is trustworthy, that He's going to feed us and give us what we need. And once we learn that and absorb that and take that in, we're able to now do our part now we're able to become faithful we're able to fulfill the other side of that bargain of now we are able to perform what he's fed us to perform you know it's kind of like you put oil in your car you put gas in the car and then the car goes because <laughs> you put what was necessary in it but if you put gas in your car and now the car doesn't drive there's something wrong with that there's something wrong with that that process is incomplete so the most high is saying I fed you I've given you my word. I've filled you with everything that you need. I gave you the nourishment. I gave you the provision. I've given you what you need to be able to now endure. To now, you know, do what is necessary to be able to move forward. I was looking at something. Um, I was looking at something yesterday. I've been trying to study gardening and planting and stuff to prepare. To prepare. To be able to have my own... Um, provide my own food because that's what we all should be doing right now we should be thinking about that and um i was looking at a video and, she, and, the, and the woman she cut the top it was a plant and she she was she cut the top she called it the growth tip she it was a part of the plant that was at the very top and it was going forward and she was saying that when the sun hits it it, it it's going straight straight on top because the the sun is right under the, under the sun so that it causes the the tree or the plant to grow straight up you know, so it, it, it encourages the growth for the plant to, to grow straight up, to continue to, to elevate. Um, but what she actually did was that she pruned it. She cut that growth tip off because what she wanted was for the plant to expand out. She wanted the plant to uh, to expand its, um, to grow more branches on it and to expand out, to bud more and to, to become more, you know, full before it grew up any taller. So she wanted it to develop it. So she cut off the growth tip, and I was like, "Wow, isn't that?" See, when you look, when you understand the stuff it, that works in the in the the stuff like gardening, the stuff that deals with the elements, when you, the more understanding you have on that, the more understanding because the Most High uses those examples in the scriptures to be able to teach us. So the more you get into the elements and understand them, you know, the more you understand our process, you know. Um, so I was like, wow, that's exactly what the Most High, because he says that I prune you, I discipline you, and I prune you, you know, but it's for your good, you know. So the Most High will cut off the growth tip, whatever you, whatever quick elevation that you thought that you were going to have or that you were seeking and that you, you know, that is, you know, possibly a good thing. 
the most high will cut that thing off that's causing you to grow up high to keep you at a certain place so that you can grow out in your character so that you can expand in fruit and be more more uh rooted and fruitful where you are before he allows that elevation if he allows any higher elevation but the 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 goal is not to just grow high and to and to increase in that way but to be developing laterally to be developing in your character in your relationships in your vision in your to be developing and bearing fruit which is the most important thing versus just just looking like you're increasing and looking tall and, and, and rising up above you know he wants to he wants us to grow where we are grow in our relationships grow in those things so he'll prune you and cut you and you're looking at like what in the world you just cut off the whole <laughs> my whole connection to growth you just cut it off what you thought was your connection to growth was cut off but the reality is is it's going to cause you to have to dig deeper because <laughs> that whatever was in that plant that, that was that was moving towards the direction of, of going up when that was cut off it had to redirect that energy redirect those things so that immediately now it she was saying that like within a week it, it was going to start budding budding you know some new new branches or whatever so whatever when most high cuts off things sometimes it's, it's going to cause you to redirect and refocus that energy refocus that those resources and dig in deeper and, and expand out you know and that's what the most high wants for us he wants us to be well developed and built up so allow allow your process find him in the process we have to learn to endure we have to learn to endure the most high wants us developed and built up and and able to endure till the end because in that endurance we are being added to we're being built up upon and in that enduring we're becoming greater we're coming becoming like the i am we're becoming like his image you know we're becoming full of fruit <laughs> we're becoming a fruitful tree and we're giving him glory so i hope that that gives you some encouragement or gives you some insight or um i wanted to share that today like i said i wanted to, to go into all the scriptures and pull out the lesson and everything but uh circumstances didn't allow that then <laughs> over these last few days so i wanted to make sure I, that i just get that out and get that um out of my ruach and i may share more on it but i pray that that was beneficial edifying um feel free to leave some comments and add to and uh, I may add some scriptures in the description. So, but for those who are celebrating the Shabbat today, Shabbat Shalom. I hope you're enjoying the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, continue to take in, take in what's unleavened bread. Because if we don't go, if we don't allow His bread to to fill us, then as we go through adversity, other leaven will start to get in, and it'll leaven our whole lump and cause us to uh, be full of something we don't want to be full of by the time we get to the other side of the adversity. So. Blessings, strength, and shalom to you, family. Love you.